tend to see clients that are sort of 65 years or older, although the product is set up for 60 year olds and older, um, living off a pension. Um, our average age of our, our client is about 72 across the, across the database. <music>today we're talking to Luke Mangers from Heartland Bank about reverse mortgages and um, really want really looking forward to this interview because on the on the on the top sort of level of looking at reverse mortgages they seem like something that is a scary prospect and and you know something that people could get caught up in but if you dig a bit deeper, you can find out, you know, in this day and age of sort of responsible lending that, that everyone has to follow and, and how uh, these products are protecting the, the, the people who take them uh, from sort of future nightmares, uh, you can actually get quite a bit of comfort with them. So thanks, Luke, for, uh, for joining us today. So we're going to talk a little bit about sort of maybe the 10 myths that, that uh, reverse mortgages have around them, but could you maybe give us sort of an overview of what, um, you know, the, the reverse mortgage basically is for those people that don't know? Yeah, so reverse mortgages for um, someone who's really looking to um, release equity from their properties. Uh, many of the people that we see today are asset rich and cash poor, um, trying to live off the superannuation. And yeah, some of them are getting by. I um, saw a client yesterday and they were, they were, they were happily as, as happy as Larry on, um, on their, um, their, their superannuation. But if those big major sort of um, um, costs come up along the way, um, how, how do they sort of pay for those? You know, um, things like uh, medical, medical purpose um, or um, just fixing up the house a little bit or, or maybe just getting a replacement vehicle that's a little bit safer and, you know, can get them from A to B. Um, there are some protections um, in place um, that, that um, allow uh, for clients to be protected against, um, you know, possible things that may go wrong. Um, within within the reverse mortgage program, um, there are a lot a lot more people that are are inquiring about reverse mortgages. Um, I think it's, it's a sort of a sign of the time, and as we sort of go forward, um, a lot more people are getting to that sort of 65 years of age um, and sitting in their own bank. Really, um, you know, they have their own sort of homes, um, asset rich, cash poor, um, looking to possibly release some money from their home to to make make. Um, their retirement living a little bit easier, I suppose. Well, that's it. So, I mean, and you think about Auckland, you know, they bought a house 50 years ago for 25,000 pounds or dollars or <laughs> yep. might, yep. might be might be dollars 50 years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, and and now it's two million bucks and they're earning thirty six thousand dollars a year as a couple on super or forty thousand or whatever it is yeah and it's just a crying shame right to have all that 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 asset there um and, and not be able to as you say for medical expenses and things like that so um yeah, so so I mean, let, let's go through sort of the, the the top ten myths. So the first one we sort of identified was that people would lose ownership; they have to kind of hand over the house to the bank. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not that's not quite correct. Um, it works very similar to a standard mortgage where the banks have a have an interest in the property, much like much like the reverse mortgage. We'll register a a first mortgage against the property and have a a um, um, a, an interest in it. Um, clients will still benefit from any value increases that the property may have. Um, we, we, we do expect them, uh, there are some obligations that, that go with, um, with having the loan and having their property still belonging to them and that they've got to make sure that their rates are up to date, um, that their insurance, that's the building, building insurance is up to date. And of course, if there's anything that needs to be done, any work that needed to be done on the property, that that has been taken care of or um, that they're, they're maintaining their property. I suppose much like much like your your standard bank loan, you'd, you'd be required to do those things in any case. So um, we're we're not going to take anybody's home away from them. Mm. And it, and it's it's just good um, practice as well to maintain its security because which kind of leads us onto the next myth is that 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 the children will uh, sort of inherit this debt or the you know the parents will be underwater and and they're not going to get anything and and you're, you're just going to eat away all this kind of uh, equity and, and fees and things. So, so in terms of, you know, nothing being left at the end of the, um, at the end of the, uh, when, when the person passes away. So, so talk yeah. us about how the protections that the products got in place for that. 
Yeah, so we do have we do have guarantees in place, and one of them is no negative equity guarantee, meaning that um, you'll never owe us more than what you eventually sell the property for on the open market or net net sale proceeds of the property. Uh, we we basically take all the risk. If if you do sell by by chance, do you sell it for less than what you owe the bank, the bank will wipe out the differences if you never owed it to us at all. So that in itself is a very, very strong guarantee, and that's a benefit that goes across the board across all our clients that have a reverse mortgage with Heartland. Um, the, other, the other protections is that we're very conservative um, as to how much we lend our client. You know, you, you won't get it like a standard mortgage to go up to 80%, for example. Um, the maximum that we would loan um, would be upon a 90-year-old, and their maximum loan-to-value ratio, or LVR, is 45% of the value of the property. The younger you are, the less we can we can lend you. Um, thus, meaning that you know if you if you're stuck in the loan for a longer period of time, that we're trying to bet our heads that there bets that there would be um, money left at the end of the day when when that property is sold, whether it would be two years from now, five years from now, or 17 years from now. There's also no loan term on our product, um, so we're not going to come knocking on the door after 10 years and say, please, please give our money back. Find me money. Yeah, that's <laughs> Find that, me the money. That, that would be very difficult. Happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love that negative equity thing because I mean. There's there's two discussions there is that um, you know the, the kids are saying well is there going to be any money for me which is which is uh, an internal emotional thing that we can't be responsible for uh, but the second thing is you know are my parents going to be um, underwater and that's that's a really big uh, issue to get your head around right and and I love that negative negative equity thing but also uh, if you really look at the um, at the LVRs that you guys lend to, so say a seventy-five-year-old, I mean, you would lend to what thirty percent? Thirty percent of the yeah. registered value of the property. Yeah. yeah. So on yeah. a million-dollar property, the max would go to is three hundred thousand. However, we we encourage our clients only to take what they need up front mm. and park the difference if we're going to approve the maximum amount for them um, in what we call a cash reserve fund that they can access at any time. They only yeah. get charged interest on what they draw down. Yeah. Our clients can also protect their equity, um, the net, net sale or net proceeds of their sale sort of when they sell the property down the line with something called um, equity protection option. So that's over and above the no negative equity guarantee. Uh, best way to explain it is if you decided to use 20%, it can go up to 50. If you decided to use 20% as the protection option, um, when you sell the property down the line, let's say you sell it for $500,000, 20% of 500000 is $400,000. We'll automatically take that 100000 and hand that back to the client. Um, client. The client will not pay any more than the 400000 that we've got left in our hand. If we look back and see that there is, say, $300,000 owed to us, we'll take the three hundred and pay the rest to the estate or, or to the client. Mm, um, mm. So that just ensures another level of protection for our clients sort of going forward. Yeah. And I think that's um, something that's really worth talking about um, with the not uh, just automatically releasing the the full amount of funds because, I mean, look, at, at 20 years old or 40 years old or 80 years old, suddenly coming upon $300,000 is, um, is a burden when there are nice cars around and TVs yeah. around and things and you really want them to be able to use that money going forward, right? So so a, a proper discussion around, hey, this is how you might want to draw down. It might just be $10,000 a year. You, you top up your income by $10,000 a year. Yep. Yes, you can get 300,000, but um, you know, that's not the goal. It's not to buy a Bentley tomorrow. It's to, it's to, uh, you know, increase the, the, the um, sort of luxury that you have in your, in your home and your retirement really. Hmm. That's cool. And, and so let's talk about payments. Um, you know, can they pay the mortgage if they, if they had additional income? Yes, yeah, so one of our guarantees are no loan repayment guarantees. So we're, we, we tend to see clients that are sort of 65 years or older. A lot of the products set up for 60-year-olds and older, um, living off a pension. Um, our average age of our, our client is about 72 across the, across the database. Um, so living off a pension, um, not really wanting to make any repayments. However, they can if they want to. So they can make regular payments or irregular payments. Um, start today, stop tomorrow. Um, get the kids to assist if the kids want uh, want to put a handbrake on the the uh, compounding interest effect. Um, but no, the, the guarantee um, that that is in place ensures that uh, we're not going to go knocking on the door if there's no no loan repayments coming in. Um, mm. 
interest is capitalized on the amount borrowed and uh, we get our money when the last person leaves the home permanently if there are a couple in there for example um, when the last person leaves the home permanently um, that's when we'll be starting to talk to the executor or to whoever's left behind as to right, okay how much when 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 would you make that repayment usually done by sale of property through executor or the clients themselves yeah, and that's an important thing, right, to know that because it's not income tested, if one person unfortunately passes away, you don't suddenly fail the testing, right? So it's 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 when the last person moves out. Yeah, correct. correct. Um, You're not going to kick anybody out if, uh, <laughs> if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be in the, in the spirit of it, I don't think. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so just talking about sort of is it is it a loan of last resort? Is it is it a... Is it a mortgage that yeah you know you come to if you're really desperate kind of thing? Is that what you want or people tend to tend to sort of package it in, into that sort of category, but I, I I see it as and 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 when I talk to people I, I I basically throw out those options out there. You know there are other options and I see this as 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 an option as well. Whatever your client decides or whatever the client decides, that option will be the right option for them. Um, we talk to them during our our thorough application process, very robust application process, one of the pages in there talks about um, the other options. For example, downsizing, you know, have you considered downsizing? And we, we, we basically notarize what they, what they say to us based off um, the discussion that we're having with them. We ask them about whether they've spoken to, um, gone back to their bank or their advisor. And I think that's important because they may be able to get a loan from, from an institution whereby the rate may be slightly lower, um, as long as they're able to meet their, um, their, their loan commitments. Um, sometimes it's a small amount that they only require. So have you spoken to the children? You know, and, and, and in fact, one of, the, one of the things in the application form is we, we notarize whether they have spoken to the children, yes or no. And if no, it's quite a big decision to make. You know, what's the reason, what's the rationale for not actually speaking to the children? Um, we also look at um, whether they have any other assets or liabilities that, uh, sorry, assets and um, investments that they, that they have, um, and whether they can um, sell something to be able to get the money that they require or disinvest their investment to be able to, um, you know, have that, those funds available to them. Generally, by the time the client does come to us, so that they have, in, have investigated all these options. And if they haven't, um, and they do elect to go um, for one of those options rather than a reverse mortgage, then, then that is a good option for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think <clears throat> just delving into that a little bit more, the um, this is not a mortgage that you can apply for online, right? This is a mortgage that requires a significant amount of advice around to make sure that you know there are there are equity protections in there and 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 all sorts of things and there's low LVR that you guys give, but there still has to be a hey, have you thought about you know you only want thirty thousand? You could you might be able to get that from the bank, right? And and that is that is a that is a good discussion to have. Um, really important that people realise they can't just this is not an instant instant uh, sort of short term finance. I uh, almost used a uh, a trademark there. It's not yeah. an, it's not <laughs> this is not a, a short term finance you can apply for online and boom you've got three hundred thousand right so there's a lot of a lot of discussion around there the process yeah. is very thorough um the the staff that we have that work through that's all they do all day long you know they, they're not involved in collecting deposit money or they're not involved in personal lending or motor vehicle lending or anything like that they only talk to clients about reverse mortgage day in and day out um mm. the, the whole process of, of getting one of these loans um can take up to six weeks you know, from way to go. Um, mm. So there's a lot of time sort of along the way um, that um, gives the client opportunity to actually go and do their due diligence. We do ask our clients to get independent financial advice in certain circumstances, and we definitely want them to get independent legal advice. So the lawyer is going to have to do the conveyancing transaction. And the, the, um, the lawyer um, reverse mortgage is a little bit different to your standard mortgage. There's a little bit more work to do with regards to um, what the um, boxes uh, the solicitor needs to tick um, to, to get this um, loan to proceed. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about interest rates, right? Because there is a, um, you know, you guys have put a, a negative equity protection in there. Interest yeah. rates at banks are very low at the moment. What what would someone expect to be paying now? I realize they're capitalized, so um, it can be added onto the mortgage, but what's the sort of yeah. uh, indication there of interest rates? Yeah, so we, we are slightly higher than your standard bank variable rate. 
Um, it is a it is a variable rate, so it does float up and down. Um, we're currently sitting at six point two, um, which is roughly one and a half to maybe two percent above um, the standard bank rates. And I think if, as long as we're sort of sitting in that sort of band, we're quite comfortable whether they're moving up or down. All right. Mm. Um, the rationale for that, though, is that we do have those guarantees, those benefits in place. Um, we take all the risk on the, under the no negative equity guarantee. Um, we have equity protection option, as you've mentioned, Rupert. Um, and of course, um, it's a long it's a long term loan. Uh, we don't essentially see any any money coming back to us or any repayments or any contribution until the last person leaves the home permanently. And that could be 12, 17 years from now. It could be five years from now. Yeah. You know, so. Um, we, we, we are slightly dearer than the standard bank's rates, um, but those are, the, those are really the reasons why, mm. why we do that. For, for a loan that could possibly see no cash coming back to you for 15 years, I actually think yeah. that interest rate is yeah. reasonably cheap, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you compare it to um, any credit card debt or any other um, sort of consumer-type finance out there, um, we're, we're at the lower end of that, it's definitely mm. at the lower end. Mm. And I think it's so people people hear reverse mortgage and they hear you know slightly higher interest rates, yeah. and they leap to without knowing about the uh, you know uh, negative equity guarantee yeah. and the you know equity equity guarantee there, uh, they leap to that. Well, oh, it's just going to uh, snowball out of control. So I think it's important to to understand those first two concepts first, uh, yeah. and then and then uh, talk about interest rates. Um, so 75 year old they might have say a, a million dollar property and they've got a fifty thousand dollar mortgage at a at a bank or something do that do they have to get rid of that what's the story with existing yeah, mortgages so and things absolutely right so we do have to be first registered so any lien on the property um, whether it be first second or caveat uh, we have to take those out um so generally um our clients uh, would would um in that example i think you think you were saying is was it a million dollar property or is yeah yeah right. Yep. So 300000 is what the client would qualify for. Uh, we, we would take out that, um, that other lender, um, repay that $50,000 mortgage. That would leave another $250,000 for um, that particular example client to come back to us um, in what we call a top-up facility or um, a cash reserve fund. Now, we, we would only charge interest on what the client initially draws down. So it, it'd only be gaining interest on that $50,000 um, and not not the full three hundred thousand dollars. I think that's also important to remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, it becomes like a big revolving credit, right? Like it's... yeah, very very much so. Although slightly different to revolving yeah. credit, money that you put yeah. in goes to pay down the loan. Um, any money that's accessed then after that doesn't come out of what's been paid down, but comes out of um, comes out of the the cash reserve fund. So sure. that, that essentially is um, slightly different there. Um, just just a little bit a um, little bit different is that we can also do a monthly advance off off that uh, two hundred and fifty thousand if the client wants a little bit of flexibility instead of drawing um, lump sums from us, um, but we would need to sort of settle out that mortgage um, in the first instance. Yeah, yeah, you would want to be the first in the queue. Yeah, first in I the think. queue. <laughs> That's yeah. quite a reasonable yeah. expectation. Yeah. And yeah. and what about what about fees and things? So do you, I mean, is it a percentage? Of, yeah. of the LVR or what, how do you do the fees? Yep, so like everything in life, there is a little bit of a cost to do things. Um, so with us, uh, the, the, two, the two fees we can control is the establishment fee. Um, do, you, do you want to know what that is? Or Sure, yeah. Yep. So yeah. $1,050 um, as, as an as a initial setup fee or establishment fee. Um, if, if evaluation is required, so any lending over 50000 will require evaluation. Um, any mortgage or any uh, property value under a um, million dollars would, would, would be around about $600 for the valuation. Um, and anything over a million dollars for the valuation will be um, eight fifty five. dollars So then the uh, cost that we can't control, because you've got to go and see a solicitor do the conveyancing transaction. The conveyancing is not a standard conveyancing, so you might charge slightly more, but anything typically around about the $1,500, maybe $2,000 mark. But I suppose if you compare that to some other options out there, client decides now that just downsizing is their, is their option. Uh, you're going to be paying a real estate agent their commission. Um, any marketing that the real estate agent will, will get you to do, so anything from about four dollars to $5,000 um, in their pocket. Um, the cost of moving and relocating, um, the cost of, of moving out of your network, I suppose. Um, you know, people that you have, your closest and dearest sort of around you. 
Um, so, you know, those are the sort of things that um, if, you, if you're looking at that, then it's sort of you look at uh, what you would be charged for um, setting up a reverse mortgage, um, the, the comparison is a little bit lower. Also, buying, buying in um, that market, you know, you sell in one market, but you're buying in the same market. Are you going to have enough money to, to be able to do that, do that purchase or settle on that purchase? Is mm. another question that you should sort of be asking yourself if you do go through that exercise. Mm. I think the, the eighth myth that we had was that the lender will take, you know, take a hold of the home when, when, when the people pass away. And I think we've sort of talked about that we in terms of that. Yeah. Yeah, we have covered. So so the house belongs to the client and they can leave they can leave the, the home by 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 um, by will or whatever to any whoever whomever they want to as far as their heirs go. Um, if the heirs don't want the property, um, then the executor will step in and, and work through the process of selling the property. Uh, we would then get our portion plus interest, um, and then the difference will go back. Any um, extra equity will go back then to either the heirs or, or the ex or executor of the estate. What's the sort uh, of timeline that, that that usually follows? I mean, do they yeah, have so to have if, it sold within two weeks kind of thing? Yeah, or? So, if, so thanks for asking, Rupert. That's a really good question. Um, if, if, for example, um, both both mum and dad have passed, um, and the executor is sort of winding this whole estate up now, and we give the estate 12 months to decide what they're going to do with, with, with the home. Um, if, if the heirs want to um, own the property, then they'll have to go and you know, pay, pay the mortgage off or go and raise a mortgage in their own right through their own bank. Mm. Um, so that, those are the options available. That, to that's them. really important because you don't want a fire sale, right? Like you don't no. want to have to sell no. it in two weeks or a month or whatever and, and, uh, and get a low price for it. So. No, absolutely not. We want to do mm. what's right by the clients. Yeah. Mm. And so um, typically a mortgage, you know, is held in your own name. What if it's in a trust? A lot of people have got trusts to protect their assets absolutely correctly, I think. Um, uh, can you still get a reverse mortgage? Yes, so absolutely. Um, with with um, the trust, we've just got to make sure that the trust has the, the power to borrow. Um, so citing the trust deed would be, it is, is imperative, is very, very important. The trustees all have to be on board, so they they, they physically have to sign off um, the application form, any illustrations or projections that get sent to the clients, and of course they've got to um, march into the solicitor's office um, to sign the loan documents when the loan documents come out. Um, any top-ups thereafter as well have to pass through the trustees as well, so it, it, they're slightly more onerous than being mum and dad, um, just signing a top-up form or a, uh, accessing money with the cash reserve, um, just a little bit of a longer process, but absolutely can look at trusts mm, yeah that's that's great and and i assume you just nominate the, the two people that are you know once they have passed away that would be the the end of the relationship yeah um, yep. so it's usually mum and dad that live in the property mm. usually mum and dad live in the property um and then you know as long as the, the trustees sort of sign everything off and the beneficiaries knows what knows what's going on especially now with the new trust laws coming out mm. uh, yeah, we, we can proceed and we can move forward yeah, yeah. And so lastly, sort of the, um, the last myth we sort of wanted, well, uh, the discussion point really was around, you know, is the bank the better option? And um, I think we have talked about this already in terms of, yeah. uh, look, if, if we can get lending at a bank, yeah, then yeah, we definitely want to go for that, right? Like it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, um, the interest rate will be slightly lower. Um, if mum and dad have got um, enough income to be able to pay or service a, um, a, a loan of, 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 of the nature that they're re requiring, then that is obviously a, a better option. Mm. Um, but this does give, but typically we see clients that are, are, are um, you know, older than 65, um, they're living off a pension, and those that are looking at releasing equity from their homes um, typically um, suit a, a reverse mortgage better. Um, yeah. Yep. The scenario. Mm. Mm. that is great yeah i think i think the real key takeaway for people is yes that you know the interest capitalizes and it is a higher than than you would classically expect from a mortgage um sort of backed bank um, but those those the low equity that you lend you're not lending to 80 percent and then capitalizing interest which will be a disaster pretty quickly yeah. uh and um uh, and then the, that negative equity guarantee is never going to be underwater, and and that the equity um, the equity guarantee. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's several things to keep in mind uh, to protect it, and and so um, in terms of you know if if someone's looking at that they want to they want to sort of maybe downsize uh, and and use a bit of the equity that they've got in there, uh, they just contact Heartland Bank for that. Yep, contact Heartland or myself. 
Mm. Um, and uh, we'll go through that, work through the referral process, um, work, work the client from, from an initial discussion application right through to settlement. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Hey, well, thank you for clarifying that because um, yeah, reverse mortgages is one that yeah, on the tip of it seems seems like a, a difficult subject to talk about. But um, with, once you know all the processes and, and and the bits of that product, it's a really really great product for that person that is very equity rich uh, and wants to increase maybe their retirement lifestyle a little bit. So um, thank you for uh, joining us, Luke. That's great. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Rupert, and um, go well. Cheers.